was he says prepare slaughter for his children that's right that means becky miss laura karen too do we want to hear bible that's what bible said give me bible i want oh you want bible we giving you bible do we want to hear bible prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers you know why that's so heavy because white folks say that wasn't me i didn't have you in slavery that was my father's i just reaped the benefits i'm innocent though do we want to hear bible that's what bible says somebody tell gino that you read on thou shalt not be joined with them in burial the white man's not going to be joined with other nations in burial go ahead because thou hast destroyed thy land because thou hast destroyed thy land this place that they stole they're destroying it with their nuclear fallouts and things like that with their chemical spills they're the ones with the what they call it climate global what do they call that thing global warming and all that that's them go ahead that's true but Isaiah prophesies judgment against Edom and the Gentile nations. And Ezekiel follows up in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14, judging the anointed cherub who walked in the midst of fiery stones. Okay? A mortal man is not a cherub covered with precious stones. Precious stones, diamonds gold sapphire okay this is an ancient spirit who was once in the garden of eden okay you have to separate those judgments yes esau edom will be judged but uh, satan that great serpent the devil will be cast into eternal hellfire okay we can't forget his judgment as well and slain thy people. And slain thy people, go ahead. The seed of evildoers. God calls them the seed. You know what seed means? Generation. Generations of evil doers. Not one man. See, notice it says, is this the man? Some of you might be saying, well, it does say the man. That's singular. But in case what I said wasn't good enough, God clears it up. The seed of evil doers plural read the seed right. of evil doers shall never be renowned they ain't never going to be famous in the earth again go ahead prepare slaughter for his children now god explains the seed of evil doers he says prepare slaughter for his children that's right that means becky miss laura karen too your friends at work that you oh i just like them they're nice god says he's preparing slaughter for them so okay this is true as well and isaiah goes on to say that their children will be dashed to pieces and their women will be ravished okay bishop nathaniel does mention this scripture often okay look read your bible people read your bible don't wait for some false prophet like Geno Jennings to read this from the scriptures because he never will. But why is this judgment so severe? Because Edom put their hands on God's children. Okay, and they uphold Egypt against our people. Okay, you done slaughtered our innocent babies. You done auctioned our children off as slaves so that they can be sold as, as, as harlots, okay? Even the boys sold as harlots, as the scriptures state. So now it must be recompensed onto you and your children, okay? You persecuted the descendants of the black Hebrew men who sacrificed their life to graft you into the covenant attempting to spare you from eternal hell okay and you couldn't even spare our babies you fed them the alligators okay you see that and you think god is not going to judge that okay so the wages of sin is death the wages of sin equals an invoice of sin debt okay the sin debt has just been accumulating 
all of the aborted babies whom you sponsor through your, your, your Planned Parenthood clinics. Okay? Sin is incredibly expensive. But if you don't have a preacher to teach you the truth, and he's not worried about the applause of men, like Geno Jennings, you'll never hear Geno Jennings preach this, ever. He's concerned about losing his churches. He has too many churches. You, you, you cannot get that many churches speaking the unadulterated word of God. He got too big. He's no different than T.D. Jakes, okay? You'll never hear him preach this. His messages, notice, are very vague, speaking to all sinners as if they're the same, and all sinners are not the same, okay? There's a heavy penalty to pay, okay? It's the, the penalty is graver the closer we get to the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So the nation that's ruling that provokes the coming of our Lord is going to get it real good because they have accumulated more time of the sin debt. It's two different nations. This is the book of Genesis talk about two different nations having two different blessings and two different curses. Okay, the scripture state, the book of Second Esther's, Esau is the beginning of the world. And Jacob, Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of that that followed. Well, we know the scripture state there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Okay, so this everything that come in this earth that you see is going to be destroyed. Okay? The book of Revelation say in one hour, all their riches came to nothing. Okay, so this is the invoice of the sin debt. You got to break down the sin debt. Okay? If we look at King David, the life of King David, King David lost four of his sons. Okay? And, and one of his daughters was raped. Okay? Just from that one sin of killing Uriah and taking his wife Bathsheba in marriage. Just from that one sin, he, he was responsible for taking one life. Okay, sending Uriah off into the heat of the battle, knowing this man was going to die. But God paid him back in blood four, fourfold. Okay, fourfold he got paid back in blood. Okay, and then everybody know this story. But they just comb over it as if it's the moral of the story, but they don't take any morality from it. You see what I'm saying? So, King David also took a census. He took a census and God sent the death angel to kill 75,000 men and women of Israel just because of one man taking a census. Read your Bible. Okay, there are curses that come in, in multiples in death. Okay, the, the death begets more death. Innocent bloodshed begets more innocent bloodshed. God has to pay that blood back. That's why with Abel and Cain, God told Cain that your brother's blood cries from the ground, meaning that now Cain is going to be marked. So someone had to come and kill Cain so that blood can be, 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 part, be paid off. Okay? The, 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 the debt is pending. You see what I'm saying? That debt, that sin debt, the invoice is still pending until it gets paid. Okay? And we also see this through Adam. Because of one sin that Adam committed, all men die because of that one sin. You see that? Why aren't preachers preaching that there are, uh, there are other things that that have to die as well, and other people that have to die as well for the sins of the forefathers that they committed. Adam is one of our forefathers. You see that. So in Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 13, it says, Woe to him who uses his neighbor's service without wages. 
and gives him nothing for his work. See, this is why Christ, it may seem as though Christ was so vague. In Luke chapter 6, verse 24, when he said, Woe to you who are rich, for you've already received your comfort. Really, he was, he was saying this because he wanted man to study for himself exactly what he meant by that. Jeremiah 22, 13 is tied to that scripture. Woe to him who uses his, his neighbor's service without wages and gives him nothing for it, for his work, okay? And James also reiterated this in chapter 5, okay? David, the apple of God's eye, <laughs> okay, so you got David, the apple of God's eye, right? Well, again, God still demanded that his bloodshed be paid back to where two of his sons were killed by two of his other sons. <laughs> and one of his sons was killed by his cousin. Okay? And his grandson was stripped of the kingdom. Okay, and again, David only set up Uriah to be killed. This ain't talk about spirits. No, they ain't no, talking no, about spirits. Yeah, spirits ain't got no children. Like no, that. spirits oh, okay. ain't got kids. You can't slaughter a spirit. Read. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. You know why that's so heavy? Because white folks said that wasn't me. I didn't have you in slavery. That was my father's. I just reaped the benefits. I'm innocent, though. What does God say? Read it again. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. For the sins of their fathers. Go ahead. That they do not rise. That they never rise again. Nor possess the land. Nor possess the land. Nor fill the face of the world with cities. Nor fill the face of the world with cities. London ain't going to come around no more. France either. America definitely not. But all the cities that they built will be gone. That's what Bible says. Give me Bible. I want. Oh, you want Bible? We giving you Bible. But this is how you explain the wages of sin and why innocent people die. Okay? Because there are atheists who lie that the Bible permits rape. And they lie without remembering that someone always has to pay the price for sin, okay? Especially death, okay? Even Christ had to pay for the sins of all men, okay? And there has to be a market for righteousness. <laughs> I got to talk about that in another video. This, this is why you should always be skeptical of preachers who make a lot of money from the basket, okay? Repentance for Edom, really, if you really, really want to look into what repentance would look like for Edom, okay, and as a preacher preaching this, what a preacher should preach, okay, what it would look like is them 100 million Edomites, okay, 100 million of them, just vacating their homes and or spiking up their taxes to collectively pay a hundred trillion dollar bill for reparations. In order for God to take that mark off of them, that end time judgment, their children to be dashed to pieces, that's, that's the type of payment that they may need to make so that the grace of God can say, okay, at least they trying. But up here continuing to say, well, I'm not my father. I didn't, I, I wasn't there in slavery. And the recipients of reparations weren't there as well. But that's not how the Most High operate. That's just like saying, why should I have to die? When you know that everyone is going to die. Okay, if they don't live to see the coming of Christ. And even that's death to a certain degree. Okay, because this flesh still has to go back to the ground. You see what I'm saying? So that's just like saying that. It doesn't make any sense.
Because we all have to die because of the sin of Adam. Even after Christ came and died on the cross for our sins. That sin that Adam committed was still perpetual. Okay? That's a curse against humanity. But from a human standpoint, he's the forefather of all men. Okay? So all men have to, they, they may not have even looked like him or may not even had all of the DNA of Adam. But that sin is perpetual. That's how the Most High operates. Okay, so there's no such thing as not being responsible for paying for what your forefathers did. There's no escaping it. It's just no escaping it. David, again, David's infant child, God killed it. And you certainly ain't more righteous than a baby. Okay, you know how many babies in the Old Testament died because of the sin of their, their forefathers? Okay, so miss me with that. You know, only selfish people talk like that. Selfish, evil people who want this earth to continue going on in the wickedness that it has thus far. Only those type of people talk like that. Okay, but it's no escaping the judgment. So there you have it. Okay, it's no escaping the judgment. Okay, you have to pay for the sins of your forefathers. Or it's going to be paid back in blood upon you and your children's children. Okay? Don't let fle your flesh write checks that your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. It's all about fates and gates. You got to have faith and you're going to need God's grace.